Tucked away in the ocean dunes, there is a home that few people are aware of. It was owned by a very private person, Norman Yon, brother of prominent Northwest architect John Yon. John Yon only did a very small number of houses, very small. His houses were so important in changing the way that people thought about architecture. So to actually have a physical John Yon house, that's something really special. After Norman's death, the home and 104 acres were added to Lewis and Clark National Historical Park. The house has characteristics of John Yon's style, but there is no documentation to prove that he designed it. You know, these bookshelves are great. Betty Glarum was a longtime neighbor of Norman Yon and knew John Yon's style well. She has been in several John Yon houses, but this is her first visit here. Definitely John Yon's house. Norman may have lived here, but John built it. <laughs> yeah, it's, he used wood so much. John Yon's designs fit the landscape and reflect the family's conservationist values. John collected, didn't collect paintings, he collected landscapes, but the real thing, by buying property here and there, you know, just to save it. When he was 19, John Yon borrowed money against his life insurance to purchase and preserve Chapman Point, one of the most scenic places on the Oregon coast. At the age of 26, he designed his first house without an architectural degree. The Wadzik House became a leading example of Northwest regional architecture. It's all about using things that are local and it's all about the environment. Well, that's John Yon. That's the, that's the Northwest regional movement right there. Some of the features of a John Yon house are narrow windows, wood walls, and the incorporation of natural light. As he's placing windows in different locations, it's to particularly to look out onto a framed view, to the framed landscape. All of those things together, the, the lighting, the views, and the environmental conditions of that site are all coming into play and in how he pushes and pulls the building and creates views out the, the bands of windows. Both John and Norman collected Asian art, which may have been an inspiration in the design of this house. A series of individual buildings may be connected with a passageway or with an exterior uh, kind of a breezeway. Boy, that's John Yon. And that's kind of an inspiration from uh, Japanese pagodas. Well, this, is, this is Norman Yon's bedroom up here. The curved stairway. Besides John and Norman, no one knows this house better than the two men who built it. Roy Hazen built the original house in the 60s, and his son Roger built the additions years later. These on this side should be holding up pretty well. Yeah, they still work nice. And he was one of the earliest pioneers in using plywood for outside siding that I know of. That's one of his fingerprints. It definitely has John Rion's unique design to it. It's all natural wood. The lines are nice. The, the way the woodwork looks, it's just, it just a, it, you don't see it anywhere else. I've, I've never seen one exactly like this. It is the most, probably the most unique place on this Oregon coast. He could afford to build a big old mansion here. That's not what he wanted. And the feeling was good. And when we finished each phase, we always left feeling good about it and good about him. Nice guy, good man. So yes, this isn't just kind of a wonderful building. It also tells this really wonderful human story of the Yon family and the people who were involved with the Yon family. It's not a, a rectangular box. It's a place that inhabits the spirit of these people. 
Following Norman's wishes, the land is now preserved forever through a conservation easement, ensuring that this unique house and undeveloped coastal habitat will be enjoyed and appreciated for generations to come.